Seismic PE prep number 15 coming right at you. Let's get into it. Determine the approximate location of the center of rigidity donated as X sub R, Y sub R. So two points if you were to find a point on a graph. You have an X coordinate, you have a Y coordinate. Use point O as the origin zero, zero. That we can see is denoted in our figure above, right over here. And basically what we've been given in this figure is the roof plan, we'll call it. Let's call it a reinforced concrete structure. And the diaphragm of this structure is rigid. And the thickened red lines that you see there uh, denote shear walls below. At each shear wall, we have a specified rigidity, which is denoted in terms of R. And then we're given lengths of our shear walls that we can deduce from the dimensions given in the figure. When we try to find the center of rigidity of our structure, you can go about like you would finding the center of mass of some type of blob like you did way back in you know, strength of materials or um, even like statics. I believe we, we solved problems like that back then way early on in our engineering academic career. And as we all know, when we are designing a rigid diaphragm, we need to find center of rigidity as well as center of mass. So you do that step anyway. If you're not remembering off the top of your head, remember the center of mass equation is that shown above. So it's the mass of each one of your components that you're summing together times the distance of that mass under consideration back to a central origin point that you're summing all of your considered masses about. This origin point can be located anywhere as long as you use the same one throughout your equation. In today's example, that's why they gave us that origin point of zero, zero at point uh, O. So we're gonna be using that as our origin and that's the reason why they gave that information. All of that is divided by the sum of all of your masses that you took under consideration. We are going to use this same equation, except instead of mass, if I go blue here, we're gonna sub out and we're gonna be our rigidities of our shear walls that comprise of our system. Now, before we go any further, I wanna take a quick moment and thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, something I strive to do here on this channel. While I might only have a couple hundred videos right now, Brilliant has thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorization. So while you're building up real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker in the process. And one of the best things I love about Brilliant is that you can learn on the go right from your phone. Whether you're diving into a new topic or just a quick practice session, you can level up on the go in just minutes. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, you have three options. Visit brilliant.org forward slash Kesteva or click on the unique QR code on screen now or head to the description below and click on the link there. With one of these three methods, you'll get an extra 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant, and let's get back to today's problem. Center of rigidity equals the following. And actually I'm gonna do center rigidity sub X because we need to do this equation two times. We need to consider it in the X direction and in the Y direction, and then take both of those values to get you an X component and a Y component to get you a final coordinate in your diaphragm. Center of rigidity, and I'm gonna call it sub x because we need to do this equation twice. We need to do it considering the x direction components as well as the y direction components, okay? CR sub x, we're gonna consider this shear wall, this shear wall, this shear wall, and this shear wall because all of these shear walls are perpendicular to the direction under consideration. When we consider the y direction in not too distant future here, it's going to be, if I go green, this wall, and this wall. Center of rigidity x component equals 1r times a distance of zero feet. We'll go wall one, wall two, wall three, and wall four, okay? So this is wall one plus rigidity of one times 10 feet plus a rigidity of one times 70 feet plus a rigidity of one times 80 feet. So all four of these walls that we are considering all have the same rigidity. They are all equally stiff is another way that you can say that. All of that divided by the sum of the walls under consideration. So four walls, each with an R of one. That means it's going to be four R on the denominator. 40 feet uh, uh, right of 
origin zero, okay? So that means we are 40 feet in moving left to right from origin zero. Rigid diaphragms and rigidity is all about just keeping all of your units and your understanding of some of rigidities and all of your information neat and organized. Well, this would be the first component of our final answer. So it would look something like the X component is always first, and then the Y component is always the, the second piece. So now we need to find that component. If you're stressed for time a bit on the exam and you're like, I need to keep moving, you can use the information or the answer that you have at hand and check by doing process of elimination. You could say, all right, well, I know it's not A, I know it's not B, but okay, it could be, oh, I guess we just have answers of A, B, A, A. <laughs> that's supposed to be C, that's supposed to be D. Jeez. I still have two answers that could possibly be the final solution. So I got a 50-50 shot. So at least I've gone from a 25% chance to a 50% chance of getting a right answer if I didn't know how to answer this problem any further. But you do, you do, come on, you do. You did the first part, you're just doing the second part exactly the same way, just with the other two walls. Let's do it. CR sub Y is equal to, scroll back up. So the walls in green that we said, there and there. We will call this one in blue, wall five, and the one up top, wall six. Well, the distance to wall five from the origin zero in considering the y direction is just zero feet because it lies along the origin. And then the distance of wall six is 10 feet plus 10 feet plus 10 feet plus 10 feet, plus 10 feet is 40 feet. Wall five has a rigidity of three, wall six has a rigidity of two. So these rigidities are slightly different from one another. Okie dokie. And remember, we are only considering those two walls for this portion of our and remember, we're only considering those two walls for the Y component of our center of rigidity because those two walls are the only ones that um, have any type of rigid effects on our diaphragm in the you know left-right action on the page, okay? Divided by the sum of those walls, which is 2R plus 3R, that's 5R. We're rocking and rolling. 16 feet, I will say above the origin point zero or O, however you want to look at it. Graphically, how that we would show that is from the origin up some amount we know is 16 feet. We can write that in here, 16 feet. And technically that gets our final solution here. So if we go back over in green, we can see that C is gonna be our final answer. Now, I'm gonna throw a curveball in here, so don't freaking click off the video. Let's understand how much eccentricity we have in our system based on uh, center of mass to the center of rigidity, but we don't have a center of mass. How are we gonna, well, let me include that and let's keep going. Let's say our center of mass has the following coordinates, 40 feet in the X direction, 20 feet in the Y direction. With our diagram redrawn, let's insert our center of mass and our center of rigidity that we found prior. Phase center discussion that we just had, we know now that our center of mass is perfectly located in the center of our structure. Our center rigidity is only equal equal in the x direction, but on the y direction, it falls slightly below center of mass. When the center of mass and the center of rigidity do not align with one another, an eccentricity exists. That eccentricity is simply the distance between the center of mass and the center of the rigidity. Well, let's say first that we have our earthquake force moving side to side on the page. You always apply your earthquake force at the center of your mass. And then your center of mass rotates about the center of the rigidity of your structure. This is why we find these two things to begin with. Well, we know the center of mass is at 20 feet in the y direction, and we know the center of rigidity is only at 16 feet in the y direction. Meaning you have a resultant eccentricity, we'll call it sub y, equal to four feet. That could be your solution. And we'll say for your seismic force in the x direction. Now, if we were to consider our earthquake force in the up-down direction or in the y direction, we would need to see if we have any resultant eccentricity in the x direction. 
Well, the center of mass and their center rigidity are in line with one another, meaning no eccentricity exists under this direction of consideration. So E sub X is simply zero feet for our solution. And we'll say four seismic force considered in the Y direction. When we have a force and we have an eccentricity, whether it's talking about rigid diaphragms or simply doing a steel connection with some sort of eccentricity, a moment will occur when you have a force and you have an eccentricity. You will get a resultant moment about your center of rigidity from that force and that eccentricity. It's those two things simply multiplied together that gives you that moment. You then need to take that moment into consideration when you're designing your rigid diaphragm. Those steps happen further along per the requirements of the ASCE 716. And until next time, this is Rich with Team Kesteva. Peace.